Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to System Configuration in Cubase 12. I'm going to have a look at presets today because where they're stored and how we go about configuring them differs primarily depending on whether or not we're using Steinberg products or non-Steinberg products, and secondly, how interested we are in using the media bay. I'm going to use Groove Agent for our um, examples today, but uh, everything that I'm going to talk about also applies to all of the Halion suite of um, software which Steinberg uh, produce. I've loaded up this kit called Ambience Kit 01. This comes from BeatAgent. More specifically, it comes from BeatAgent SE library. In other words, if you install the standard version of GrooveAgent SE that comes uh, bundled with Cubase, you're going to get this preset. I've also got it visible um, in the browser on the right-hand side. And here you can see Ambience Kit 01. What you're looking at there is a database specifically and exclusively dedicated to Groove Agent 5. I'm going to set the rating of this preset to four stars and we're going to use rating to differentiate between these various examples. I'm going to close that down. Now I'm going to open Groove Agent SE. This is your, your free cut down bundled version and I'm going to load the same kit. Here it is, three stars, can you see? So again, if I open the browser and go to search for it, there's exactly the same view, but this time we're looking at the Groove Agent SE version of that, uh, of that plugin. On SE, I'll rate it two stars. And close that down. And finally, we're gonna have a look at it in Media Bay. I'll explain all of this shortly. So I've done the, I've already done the search. You can see in the text box at the top, I've typed the word ambience. Here's our ambience kit 01, and it's still set to three stars. So we have three separate databases here, all basically looking at the same preset. Let's see if we can drill under the hood and make a little bit more sense of this. In the ambience kit 01, in the media bay, you can see that we've got this VST sound file, and it starts with 49051. That'll do us, we don't need any more. Let's head back into the full version of Groove Agent. And I'm going to right click. And if we open up the search for box, you get the same kind of metadata. And here you can see the path is the same VST sound file 49051. Hope that wasn't hidden by my head. I'll do this one a little bit more carefully to make sure it's definitely not. And there, 49051. So all three of those files, those preset, those VST preset files are pointing at the same physical file on the hard drive. So that core preset information is common to all three environments and the preset actually comes from SE, that VST sound file that we were looking at there is contributed to by the Groove Agent SE um, application. But if we have a look in each one of the folders, so I'm in the roaming folder here as you can see, Groove Agent and SE, and as we've already seen Cubase, all have their own MediaBay3.db file. In other words, they all have their own database. That's why we're able to look at the three different perspectives of that preset with different ratings. We could tag them with different characteristics. This is all the characteristic information. This is everything that's stored in the database. And in this particular case, we're looking at SE here. All of these tags will be stored in the SE version of the MediaBay database. So if I went in and edited this character and gave it a new attribute, then that would be tagged in only that database, the media bay and the full version of Groove Agent won't have that glass attribute tagged. Now quite why we have different databases for every application, I'm not entirely sure. It seems like they're one step away from a glorious solution here. If all of that could be stored in one master database that we only had to update once, then you know that would be completely awesome. But just bear in mind that if you go into your Groove Agent database and you start messing around with all of these tags and spending lots of time um, adding characteristics and attributes to a particular piece of information, to a particular kit set, it's not gonna reflect in the, in the, the main media bay. Now with a little bit of database SQL skill, you could theoretically um, open those databases side by side and do updates, uh, selecting on the name. I'm not going to go into that today because I don't want this to become a database tutorial. But if you've got access to all of those databases and you can update them, then you could theoretically write a, f a fairly straightforward query 
to do a mass update from one database to the to the other. Beyond that, I won't go into any more detail on, on that particular aspect. Where things become a little bit more muddy is when you want to save the preset itself. So now we've edited this ambience kit. Uh, let's say we've added a new uh, kick drum to the sound. Let's say we've picked uh, this kick instead and we drag that over onto the pad. We've now fundamentally changed that preset and we want to save this version of it. So if I go into save kit, the information it's giving me here, all of these attributes, tags, ratings, whatever the preset name, all of that's gonna now detach from the original VST sound version of the preset. This is gonna be stored as a physical file on my computer. So if I choose to call it Ambience Kit 01 and say okay, that file now exists physically on my machine. Let's go and find it. So the path on PC is your documents folder. Obviously it'll be different for Mac users. And we're looking for the VST3 presets folder. I'm just gonna do a search inside that entire folder and look for Ambience Kit 01. And here it is in the documents VST3 presets, Steinberg Media Technologies Groove Agent subfolder. So this entire thing is split by manufacturer and then inside each of the manufacturers, all of the various different products. Here we can see the separate folders for Groove Agent and Groove Agent SE. Obviously, if I go into SE, I won't do this because it will bore you. But basically, if I went into to, to SE and did exactly the same operation, this file would pop up in the SE folder. And there it is. Now that we've done that, let's head back to Media Bay and see what happens when we search for that, uh, for that file name. Now we've got two Ambience Kit 01s. One of them is coming from the original SE. You can see that the plugin name says Groove Agent SE because that was the original uh, source of the, um, of, the, of the preset. But this instance down here uh, that's marked as a Groove Agent plugin name is the one that I've just physically created. As you can see, if you call it exactly the same name, things are going to get confusing in the media bay. But if we have a look in the path, is that that's not hidden. There you go. C users antho documents. That's my documents folder. And that's where the, the new preset file is now stored. So every time I do a backup of my computer, which also includes my documents folder, I'm going to get all of this user data saved for free. Now I'll just make very brief mention of these categories, subcategories, and all of the various different ways to find information. Can you see we've got Groove Agent presets up at the top, um, Hallian presets and whatnot. Be a little bit careful with how these plugin name categories are assigned. A couple of years ago, I did a very deep dive where I tried to figure out the difference between a Halion 6 preset and a Halion Sonic preset. I did disappear down a bit of a rabbit hole, but if you're interested in actually seeing where these tags come from and how Steinberg manage all of its various plugins from all of the different um, software packages, then um, I'll put a link above it, it is pretty heavy going, but you know, that, that was just a deep dive I did on that particular subject. But the most important takeaway from this is that ratings and other meta tags are stored on databases. The preset file itself um, is either stored in a central VST fi uh, sound file that multiple applications are capable of seeing in the Cubase world, or the moment you click save to create a, 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 a bespoke version of it, that's gonna get condensed down to a physical file on your PC. Let's have a look at a non-Steinberg product. So here this Korg is an Archuria plugin. And if I look for a preset that's got a pretty identifiable name, so I've just loaded this preset called Rubicon, you won't find that anywhere, not only in any Media Bay database, but anywhere in any of the Steinberg locations either. At the moment, this is purely in the Archuria world. Now this is gonna be, um, synth specific basically when you install the Archuria package it's going to put its presets somewhere in this particular case I happen to know it stores them along alongside the uh, the application installations themselves so if I look for the word Rubicon in the Archuria folder on my Cubase data drive so this is where I have my Archuria plugins installed as you can see third-party vendors are completely free to create uh, any sort of filing system that they want and they, these are the various packages that refer to that preset. Now depending on how I save this preset on my system is going to determine where it lives. So if I use the internal Archuria uh, methodology, let's say save preset, this is inside the plugin, I've not touched the, over, the overarching VST3 architecture. Uh, we'll call this the Rubicon 1. 
Let's see where that's ended up. So in this case, Archuri has maintained its own internal uh, methodology for handling these things. And you can see it's been placed inside a user folder, but still hanging off my installation folder, Archuria presets and the Archuria root is where all of my Archuria products live. However, if we go up to the top bar, we have the opportunity to save it as a VST3 preset. And now if I save it here, call this Rubicon2, this is gonna end up in my documents folder. And there it is in my VST3 presets folder under Archuria Korg. So this thing is almost your one-stop shop for all VST files that you save um, using the Cubase mechanism. There's one final little twist in the tail. Some Steinberg products, in fact, well, some, some products generally use the roaming folder and Padshop is actually an example of one. If we head back to our roaming folder and step up a level, you can see that that also has a VST3 presets folder. And if we go in there, head into the Steinberg folder, you can see that some of the Padshop um, presets are, uh, are stored in here. So for instance, if I look for like whole tone trills, so if we head into the media bay and search for that, there it is in the media bay. And when we click on it, sure enough, you can see the physical location, see users antho, app data, roaming, VST3 presets. So you do need to be careful about all of this stuff. Unfortunately, there isn't one completely satisfying overarching answer. If you're not interested in saving versions of presets yourself and you only want to use all of the internal stuff, and more particularly, if you're only interested in using the Cubase products, your life is actually pretty straightforward because all of that data lives in the VST sound files and the data that you tag, the ratings and characters will be stored on your database. You then need to pick very carefully which methodology you're going to use. Do you use your media bay to master, as, a, as a master overarching view of all of this software, that's kind of what it's designed for, but they've also left you with all of those individual applications. When you head into the Groove Agent program itself, it's got its own completely distinct database. Obviously the reason is if you can install Groove Agent um, in a DAW, in a non-Q-based DAW, it will still have its database, it will still work. But I would imagine that it's probably not beyond the wit of man to figure out some solution whereby you can always only ever have one database on your system and any Steinberg product plug into it. That's not how it lives at the moment. So you're going to have to, you know, make those decisions yourself. Personally, I, have, I only ever assign ratings or tags in the media bay itself. I never use any of the individual applications. That's just the solution that works best for me. Okay, I hope that's clarified rather than made even more muddy in the situation as far as VST pre presets are concerned. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.